Hi, I'm Terry, and this is the Catholic Breakdown. Sin, offending God through our words and actions, disobeying His law, what Christ came to die for and rid us from. While Protestants and Catholics mostly agree what sin is, one of the biggest divisions between us are the levels of sin. When I was Protestant, I was told all sin is sin, all sin should be avoided, and all sin is equal. Catholics believe that all sin is sin, sin should be avoided, but not all sin is equal. And we draw this conclusion from a careful analysis of the scriptures. We see this first alluded to when Jesus is being interrogated by Pontius Pilate in John 19. Pilate asks Jesus if Jesus is aware that Pilate could free him at any time. Jesus replies that Pilate would not have any power if it had not been given to him. And those that gave Jesus over to Pilate were guilty of the greater sin. From this, we can know that Jesus believed that there are levels of sin, that some sin was greater than others and he undoubtedly taught this to his apostles. We know this from the first letter of St. John the Apostle. You know, the same guy that hung out with Jesus, learned from him, ate with him, joked with him for three years. So we can know that John's word is good. In the fifth chapter of his first letter, John writes, If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin, about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. John here has taken sin and divided it into two groups, deadly sin and not deadly sin. We call these mortal and venial sins. Some here will make the claim that John is talking about physical death. But we're Christians, we don't care about our physical death, we care about spiritual death. And his letter mentions spiritual death over and over and over. So what makes a mortal sin mortal? Well, there are three boxes you have to check for it to be considered a mortal sin. The first box, is it a big deal? In Luke 18, a rich man asks Jesus how to inherit eternal life. Jesus replies, don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't steal, etc. Jesus is basically listing the Ten Commandments. Those are what he considers to be a big deal. In Matthew 25, Jesus also describes the judgment of nations, that we should give drink to the thirsty, food to the hungry, shelter to the homeless. These are the things that we should be doing to obtain eternal life. Jesus also mentioned the Beatitudes, to be meek, to be humble, to seek out righteousness. And that's another good key of what a big deal is. The second box? we know it's wrong. If someone were to truly not know that missing mass is wrong, and they're missing mass, are they really sinning? The answer is no. If a person doesn't know that they're sinning, it's not a mortal sin. Ignorance is bliss. Willful ignorance, which is purposely not learning the law, is sinful. So keep learning. The third check mark is that you do something of your own free will, that you fully consent with what you're about to do. If someone straps a bomb to your chest and tells you to rob a bank, and you do it, you're not guilty of a mortal sin. Someone is threatening you, you wouldn't have chosen to sin if you had the choice. This is also where addiction and mental illness comes in. If someone is truly mentally ill or has an addiction, and they cannot fully consent with what they're doing, then they're not guilty of a mortal sin. So those are the three check marks. If any of them are missing, the sin is considered venial or not deadly. Also falling into this category is swearing or breaking the law by speeding, stuff like that. Now that said, swearing is not good. Breaking the law is not good. All sin is sin, and all sin should be avoided. Like, don't sin. Any of the sins. Mortal, venial, don't, don't, don't sin. But there's a clear and obvious difference between cussing and stabbing somebody in the neck. To further illustrate the difference between mortal and venial sin, imagine that your dad gives you a bright white button-up shirt to wear. To mortally sin would be to destroy the shirt, to completely ruin it. When you've done this, you've become spiritually dead. To venially sin would be to stain the shirt. It doesn't ruin it, but it doesn't look good. Your ideal is the bright white shirt. So what happens if you destroy your shirt, if you become spiritually dead, if you commit a mortal sin? Catholics have the sacrament of confession, which was created by Christ. The priest, by Christ's authority, absolves you of all of your sins. Your shirt, once ruined, has returned to the bright white shirt it once was. You're no longer spiritually dead. It's a chance for you to start again, to start new. So if you're in a state of mortal sin, see a priest for confession, and be made spiritually healthy once more. God bless, and get a colonoscopy. So my friend Liz made me this rosary, and it's like super pretty, and I really, really like it. So I just want to say thank you, Liz. This is totally awesome.